Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing details on how I painted this. So stay tuned, it's coming up. Okay, so I have speeded up the video um, just a little bit, otherwise we would be here all day. So it is just going a little bit faster than what I would actually normally work. But I started this piece obviously with a piece of Yupo paper. It's what the alcohol inks work best on. And I started with putting down some simple gray, shadow gray color, I believe it's called, and adding some purple and also some alcohol. So this is a bit of a wet in wet kind of process. I am making the paper really, really wet, putting lots and lots of alcohol in there. So it really moves all around. See, there's lots going on right now and then tilting and letting those colors really just mix on the paper and do their own thing. Sometimes you get these little holes like that that you have to just push the ink into, either using a straw or you could pick up a brush if you needed to. And continue pouring and tipping and moving that ink around. Just adding color where you think there may be need for more color. Just seeing what it does on your on your paper. Sometimes I get out the straw to push it in certain directions and move it around a little bit more. So this is really just trial and error, playing around with it. Keep moving it till you get something that you like. So I'm working mostly with the sky area here, so I'm not filling the entire Yupo paper. I'm going to do different colors down at the bottom. If you add ink directly into that fluid bit there, you see that gray, it tends to stay closer together. So if you need it to move around a little bit more, add some alcohol right into it or blow on it to dilute it just a little bit. So the fluid fluidity is starting to slow down a little bit um, as the alcohol has started to evaporate and dry on the paper. So it's definitely not moving as much as it was. So here is an opportunity to get some really cool effects happening. If you need more color, add that in there. I decided that it needed to just be a little bit darker up in that corner. Sorry about the reflection there. It's hard not to, to get that with these inks because they're so wet and so shiny. So you can start to see there's actually kind of cool sky starting to form. There is an essence of just letting it be how it wants to be. You ha only have so much control when it's um, wet in wet like this. It's going to keep moving until it completely dries. So if I want to have a lighter area, I just simply added alcohol like on that right hand side there and it starts to push any pigmented areas away from itself. So that's how you can get some lighter areas in your sky if you're wanting them. So I quite like what's happened there. So I'm going to leave that, although I expect it will change before um, it's completely dry. But now I'm going to work on the, um, the ground area. So I've just chosen my colors. I've gone in with a nice denim blue and some alcohol and now some yellow. I tend to stay away from the very edge where I want the, the ground to be or the horizon to be because the ink, as you can see, it's starting to creep up the Yupo. So if we were to start right in the middle with our color, it will just grow and there'd be barely any sky left. So I just let it grow naturally and then push it a little bit if it needs just a little bit of encouragement. So 
So I'm using the edge of a straw just to push that ink around. And I'm pushing it up into the sky just a little bit. But this way I've got a little bit more control over the ink. So you do need to keep an eye on that sky. Remember I said that it's going to keep moving. So it's not dry completely as we left it. In actual fact, it's quite different. So I'm just going to work back into it with that section that's wet. So I'm using my straw and just blowing it and moving it around just to break up those lines that went in there because it, it didn't look quite right for me. So just blowing on the edge of that um, that ground. You can see it's creeping up into the sky. So now I'm just going to take a paper towel and dab some texture into there while it's still a little bit wet. It has to be a little bit wet for you to be able to do this. Then taking out a section just to lighten it just a little bit. Again, just blowing into my sky. It's always a bit of back and forth. I'm not worrying too much with any kind of detail with this background. We're going to work other colors right on top and build up our image. So this is just a base to work on. Next, I want to create some texture in the ground. So as you can see, I've got some bubble wrap and a spray bottle. I'm just spraying it off camera. So I spray the bubble wrap and then place it down and just leave it. And I'm going to do a section on the right hand side there as well. So I'm just spraying pure alcohol onto the bubble wrap and then placing it down. So what it's going to do is move those colors slightly underneath. And as you can see in the sky, we're really starting to get some really cool detail. So I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see. I love that texture that's in the sky. Really nice. Okay, so I had to leave that for a minimum of five or six hours. It really depends on how much alcohol you um, sprayed your bubble wrap with. So it will vary. Um, ideally, I just leave it till the next day and then come back to it and then for sure it's going to be dry. So peeling that off. Not got much texture on the right hand side, but a little bit more on the left. So this is the image that I'm going to work from. I just wanted to share that with you quickly. So as the image as my reference, I'm keeping in mind where all the dark areas are. So I've come in with my denim blue and my brush and just using the palette on the right hand side, aka a tile, <laughs> um, I'm putting the ink on there and picking it up with my brush because then I've just got a little bit more control. If I put the ink directly onto the Yupo, it would just, I wouldn't be able to get these um, precise marks in. I do want to keep the inks as fluid as possible. So there's a little bit of back and forth with the alcohol as well eventually. But for now, I'm just using the ink straight from the bottle onto the, the tile palette there. And I picked up a forest green that I'm now putting on top in places. And I'll go back and forth between the green and the blue just to build up this depth that's going to sit behind the bridge. So these trees are darker. So I want to try and get in a fairly dark base background. Right now, it's looking fairly tight and um, less like the inks. So in a moment I'm going to add some pure alcohol in there just to help loosen that up a little bit. So once I've got lots of nice pigment on the Yupo, I put a blob of alcohol there on the tile and use that with my brush just to help soften the edge. So you can go straight on the, the Yupo as well if you're feeling brave and I just use the straw to kind of blow it around so using different techniques from the brush to the straw to sometimes the cotton bud as well, it just helps to create all these varying patterns that happen in the inks. So I've added just a little bit more blue to that spot, felt like it needed just to be a little bit bluer. 
get in with my blow, uh, with my straw and my my brush in sections. So this section here is where the river is going to be. So I initially lightened that area earlier with a paper towel and rubbing alcohol as I want the colors that go on there to be more of the pure colors. When you work on top of the colors that are already there, it reactivates them. So you're always going to get those colors mixing. So if you want the colors to be more pure as they are from the bottle, you'll need to remove the ink underneath that section first, like I did there. So I've used on that left hand side of the river, I've got pool. And on the right hand side, I've used eggplant, which is more like a purpley color. So I'm just building it up, adding, um, adding more pool in there. And then in a second, I'm going to add more eggplant as well. So I'm adding that eggplant right on top just to get that depth in places and then removing some of it with the cotton bud. I didn't ha add any alcohol to that cotton bud. I just used the wetness that was there. So next I'm gonna use these Stettler pens to make some drawing marks on top. That way I can get a really nice bridge coming in. So I'm using different sizes. I've got 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and also 0.8. So I'm going to start with the smaller one at 0.3 to get my lines in there first. So I've speeded this up just a little bit more. My drawing time took quite a while, so I wanted to speed that up for you guys. So at first I'm drawing in the bridge, again with the smaller pen to start with, just to get my, my rough sketch in there. You don't need to worry if there's any mistakes that you make, you can use a cotton bud and a little bit of alcohol on it to remove any lines that you've put down there that you don't want. So I'm just going in there, taking out any little bits that I didn't need. Adding some detail within the bridge there. So this is more of a sketch than a really, really detailed um, drawing. So I brought in a paper towel there, I should have brought that in earlier, but it helps just to avoid getting any marks on your paper where you don't want them or any oils from your skin as well because when you've got oils on the paper from your own fingerprints or your hands, it actually affects how the ink move across it. So any oils will affect the inks. So I'm just drawing in my lamp, lamp posts there. Trying to get the perspective right. So this bridge is kind of going off into the distance towards the right hand side. So now I've picked up a a wider pen, I believe the 0.8. And I'm just going over some of the lines just to make them a little bit heavier to help them stand out just a little bit more. Again, using that cotton bud where needed just to remove any excess lines. It's almost like your eraser for pen and er, for pencil. Adding a bit more detail to the top of that bridge. So where the dark is sitting into the bridge, I'm actually going to take a cotton bud and a little bit of alcohol and remove it. So dab it in that alcohol just to remove it so that bridge is going to come forward of those dark trees and bushes in the background. You can see how it's starting to be more visible. And just lightening some other areas on the bridge as well. You could also do this with your brush and wipe off the excess ink on a paper towel, but I think the cotton buds just work really nicely. So now I'm dropping ink down to create the shadows that would be under these bridges. So I believe I'm using eggplant. 
So as I got to the smaller sections of the bridge, I decided to put it on my palette so that I had more control. Put it on the edges on those plinths that stand forward. Again, just going back in where the really darkest areas would be on those first two arches, building it up. Um, I'm putting in some eggplant for the base of some bushes or little plants that sit on top of those. And coming up in just a minute is a big disaster. It's coming up in just a second. And there we go. So I put paper down, paper towel down really fast because I didn't want, I wanted to avoid it spreading as much as possible, but I basically sp uh, spilt some pure alcohol on there. You can see what's remaining on the, the right hand side. So I'll remove it and you can see how it's lightened everything, but we'll just work with it. It actually might end up being really good. So I take a paper towel and I just dab away, just softening those edges and then putting some pure pigment back in there, just spreading it around. So I I have lost my lamp, um, my lamp posts for now, but we'll put them back in in a second. So nothing is really too bad that we can't correct it. It's just that if you fell in love with something, it's hard to get that back exactly. But we're just going with it. We'll work with it. So I've got the sky, it looks quite nice. I quite like how it turned out in the end. And now I'm just sketching in my lampposts again. See, we can go right over the top once that sky was dry. Your ink does have to be dry for these pens to work on it. Just adding my detail back in on the bridge where we lost it. And I actually like the dots on the right hand side. It just seemed to work for me. Then we had to add the darks back in there as well. So again, I went back in with my eggplant and a little bit of brushwork. So I'm just lightening that bridge again with a cotton bud and a little bit of alcohol just to remove areas to make them a little bit brighter and to stand out a little bit more. Adding my dark bushes and trees in there as well. So normally you wouldn't have to do all this, but it's because we had that little bit of an accident, we had to redo everything. But I wanted to keep it in the video because it just shows you that you can also rectify it yourself. If you have a little accident like that, at this, you know, there's nothing that you you can um, not correct. And sometimes it works in our favor. Sometimes it will completely ruin something but I tend to just go with it. So adding some darker shadow on the left hand side of those. Adding some dark green with some purple, so the eggplant and forest green for my plants that sit just right on top of those plinths that come out from the bridge. I'm just wiping my brush clean, dipping it in alcohol and wiping it onto a paper towel. And I'm adding a little bit brighter stuff in the foreground here. So I've gone in with some yellow and some lime green and alcohol. And as I'm dropping the alcohol and blowing it, just to, to have that little bit more control, I put a little bit of pool in there. I really want this foreground to stand out, so I'm using brighter colors on purpose. And I take a few liberty choices with, with the colors that I choose. Coming up, we get really crazy with our colors. So I'm still keeping in mind where depth and lightness should be. So trying to build that up, but just being creative with the colors I choose to do that. So just going in, adding more detail. Sometimes I remove color as well. That's part of the process with inks. So going in with a bit of alcohol and a paper towel and dabbing at it. Now I brought in some 
magenta and pool and we get that cool kind of purpley color that comes through just to create a little bit more interest in there switching between the alcohol and the pure pigment sometimes dabbing it away if you if you go too heavy with the pigment and you want it to be lighter that's where you can use the paper towel so if your ink is still wet you can use the paper towel right on it and it will soak that ink up and you can also add alcohol to it. So here I'm just spritzing with my spray bottle that section of the Yupo. So I covered it up so it, I had more control and that it didn't affect the rest of it because the spray does go everywhere. So I left that painting and then came back to it on another day and decided that I needed to really add a lot more color in this foreground. So that's when I started picking up these yellows and oranges and pinks and really making it brighter. Just being really fluid, adding a little bit of alcohol, using the straw to get that softness and lack of control, if you like, <laughs> within there. Sometimes dabbing it. It's just a buildup of layers and that's when you get all these really cool things happening. So I just keep going, building it up, adding more. So then I start to add in a little bit of green just because I want that to be the primary color with these bright pinks and oranges kind of peeking through in sections. Add some yellow. The yellow will mix with any kind of blues or greens on there so it won't come out completely yellow, but that's kind of what I want. Also by dabbing with the paper towel, you get these cool textures that happen within there as well. So I'm just adding a little bit more detail to my water over here, brightening it up a little bit more with the pool color. Creating a little bit more of an edge along that river. And then I add a few little colors within the bridge as well, just to make that pop. And a little bit of detail, adding some shadows at the bottom there. And adding some blue, just in certain sections. Keeping my brush nice and clean in between. And then just a little bit of the purple magenta in there. It just makes it all a little bit more cohesive. A little bit more detail on my flowers or plants that are growing right there. Sometimes lifting out if I need brighter areas. So if you're lacking some lightness, just take that cotton bud or alcohol on your brush and remove some of it. You have to be careful not to pick up too much alcohol or, or it will spread too much. So just dab it into your alcohol and then dab it on a paper towel first and then remove some of the color on your artwork. So I'm trying to be a bit more tidy now. I've uh, put a lid on my alcohol so I don't knock it and ruin it again. So I'm just adding a little bit of yellow in my lamp posts and straightening those lines and adding a little bit more darkness with my thicker pen. Then I add a few little details within the in the grasses and the bridge, just loose mark making within the grass in the foreground. And here is a bit of a close up so you can see all those marks that I made in there, really loose and undefined, just adds that little bit of detail. And there you go. Put your questions and comments below and don't forget to click subscribe to see next week's video.